Welcome to the 770 Series Screen Printing System by Printa Systems. The 770 Series is an all-inclusive, compact, exposing printing and curing system. The 770 Series requires little space to set up, but maximizes workflow and efficiency. This video, in conjunction with the owner's manual, is designed to guide you through the entire printing process using the 770 Series Screen Printing System. The supply package included with the 770 series contains most of the components necessary to get you started screen printing, with the exception of artwork. The 770 series incorporates clean, environmentally friendly supplies that can be comfortably used in a home setting. A complete list of items included with the supply package can be found in the owner's manual. The process begins with artwork, which will be used to make the screens needed for the print job. The art may be provided by the customer, and more often than not, you'll need to manipulate, add, or subtract from the supplied art, or create it from scratch. Graphics programs such as Corel Draw or Adobe Illustrator are invaluable aids in this process. There are a number of companies that sell quality vector clip art, along with complete templates, ready for you to apply color and separate. Even non-artists can produce impressive screen print designs using these aids. These tools can save a great deal of time and provide sample art that you and your customers can agree on right away. Printa Systems recommends having some of these programs and tools on hand. Once the artwork is finalized, create a color-separated film positive. A film positive is an opaque image that light cannot pass through. This image is printed on a clear piece of inkjet film or often a piece of frosted laser paper. An Epson inkjet printer with RIP software is recommended. Each color in the finished art requires its own film positive. Each positive in turn becomes an image on a screen. The darkness of the artwork is critical to the process. If it is not completely opaque, light will pass through the image curing the screen above. This will cause the screen not to rinse out properly after exposure. The next step is to prep the screens needed for your design. The screen frames in the 770 series are constructed of lightweight aluminum, providing for strength, durability, and ease of cleanup. New screens should be abraded and degreased before attempting to apply the photosensitive imaging film. This will remove any dirt, dust, or finger oil that is accumulated during handling. To begin, simply wet the system on both sides with plain water using the spray attachment that came with the system. Apply a dime-sized amount of abrader to the green scrub pad and gently scrub both sides of the screen. Rinse thoroughly with warm water to remove all of the abrader from the screen. Take the time to rinse both sides as the abrader may be lodged in the screen and will not be noticeable until the capillary film is applied. A braider is for new screens only and does not have to be applied again. The next step after a braiding is degreasing. Apply a small amount of mesh degreaser directly to both sides of the screen and scrub gently using the white scrub pad and interchangeable pad handle that are included with the 770 series supply package. Rinse the entire screen on both sides thoroughly until there are no traces of suds left and only clean, soap-free water is appearing. After the screen has been degreased, you may want to use a small amount of direct prep, applying this to the back side of the screen using a small green sponge. Direct prep is a water bonding agent that helps with the application of the capillary film to the screen. After applying, gently rinse the screen. Blot the screen dry using paper towels or newsprint. Place the clean screen into the drying cabinet feature of the 770 series and turn on the circulating fan. In a matter of minutes, the screen will be completely dry and ready to receive the stencil film. Coating a screen with a photosensitive capillary film included in the supply package is quick, clean and easy using plain water. Using the opaque buildup board that is supplied with the 770 series Lay a piece of clean paper on top of the board. 
Remove one piece of capillary film from the light safe container. The capillary film is light sensitive and should be handled in subdued lighting. Never expose the capillary film to direct sunlight as this will ruin the film. Notice there are two sides to the film, one shiny and one dull. The dull side of the sheet is the emulsion side and must be placed facing up. Pick up a clean blank screen and place it directly on top of the film. The dull side, referred to as the print side, will be in contact with the film surface. Center the film to the screen. Next, using a side-to-side -side motion, spray the surface of the screen with plain water working from the top down. Notice the film turned darker as the water adheres to the surface of the screen mesh. If you see any yellow or dry spots, simply add a little more water. Do not soak the screen. A light coating of water will suffice. When spraying the mesh is complete, Squeegee off any excess water using the squeegee card supplied in the supply package. Use just enough pressure to remove the water so no puddles are allowed to form. Do not use excessive pressure when performing this task. Now, using a lint-free paper towel, gently blot the edges of the screen dry. Do not rub the screen on the print side. The screen is now coated and needs to dry before exposing. Since a coated screen is light sensitive, complete the drying process in a dark area. This is accomplished by placing the coated screen into the 770 series drying cabinet and closing the cover. Start the fan and the screens will dry rapidly. Generally, this will take an hour, depending on environmental conditions. While the screens are drying, initiate the press setup procedure. Ensure that the number 2, number 3, and number 4 platens are positioned properly. Position each platen, allowing for 1.5 inches from the back of the platen to the bottom portion of the print head. Remove the number 1 platen from the print arm. Place the 770 exposure unit onto print arm number 1, ensuring the exposure unit is laying flat and is not tilted. Secure the unit using the knob located on the right-hand side. Do not over-tighten the exposure unit. Plug the power cord into the receptacle on the rear corner of the exposure module. The 770 exposure unit is a dual-function unit that acts as a light table and exposure unit. Notice that the unit has three small bulbs and six large bulbs. When the unit is turned on, the three small bulbs light up acting as a light table to line up the artwork. During the exposure process, a safety switch located on the back of the unit is depressed by the screen frame, activating the larger bulbs. These exposure bulbs will not turn on unless the screen is completely flush against the exposure unit and the switch has been depressed. The 770 series exposure unit contains built-in register pins that are an integral part of the system Pre-punched Mylar carrier sheets are provided with the 770 series supply package. The Mylar carrier sheets enable you to precisely align color-separated artwork on the exposure unit. The supply package also includes a pre-printed Mylar alignment sheet to aid in the placement of the artwork in relation to the shirtboard or specialty platen. Place the pre-printed Mylar alignment sheet on the exposure unit. Next, place one of the Mylar carrier sheets on top. Now, take one of the film positives and place it on the Mylar alignment sheet. It is best to use one of the more predominant pieces of artwork. This will usually be your last color or trap color. Using the pre-printed guidelines, position the art to reflect its final print position on the garment. Use a T-square to center and true up the art, then tape it in place. Next. Place another Mylar carrier sheet on top. Place the next film positive onto the Mylar using the registration marks of your artwork to line the two film positives up. Repeat this step for the remaining colors. When the process of layering the artwork is complete, check to see if the screens are dry. Once dry, the screens are ready to be exposed. Remove the layers of Mylar with artwork. Start with the first color in the image, 
And remember, a general rule is the lightest colors are exposed first. If you have used the largest or trap color to line up the artwork at the start of the process, this should be the last color to be exposed. Remove a dried screen from the cabinet. Peel off the clear backing from the capillary film and discard. The clear sheet should separate cleanly from the film. If you feel any hesitation or sticking, do not pull as this may peel the film away from the screen. Place the coated screen into the printhead number one. Make sure to note the number of the printhead the screen will be inserted into. The number is located on the registration block underneath the printhead and is clearly visible when the head is raised. To recall the order of the screen, mark the screens with the same number using a pencil or write it on a piece of tape. Place the taper pins into the locating holes. Gently tighten the screen clamp securing the screen, being cautious not to over tighten. Check the screen to make sure it's lying flush against the exposure unit by gently tapping the top of the screen. There should be no space between the screen and exposure unit. If there is, use the ratchet knob on the top of the printhead and adjust the screen accordingly. Once the screen is securely in place and flush against the exposure unit, lay the opaque exposure board on top of the screen surface foam side down. This is the same board used as a build-up board when applying the capillary film. This board keeps light from dispersing around your image as it exposes. It also provides weight to ensure an intimate contact between the screen mesh and the film positive. A weight of 15 to 20 pounds should be placed on top of the board to ensure proper contact. Set the exposure time for one minute and press start. During the exposure process, everything around the artwork is hardened by UV light while the area above the artwork stays soft. The exposure unit will automatically turn off and an audible beep will indicate it's done. Remove the weight and weight board, loosen the screen clamps and remove the screen. Take the screen to the washout booth and gently rinse the exposed screen on both sides using cold water. The unexposed emulsion will begin to soften and you'll see the image appear. From the back side of the screen, continue to wash the image until all the unexposed emulsion is washed away, leaving a clean, clear image. The entire rinse process should take no more than a minute. Blot the screen dry using paper towels or newsprint. Inspect the image area, ensuring it is clear of any residual emulsion. Place the screen into the drying cabinet to dry. Repeat the exposure process for as many colors as you have for the design. When printing, it is necessary to adhere the garment to the printing platen. The 770 series supply package includes a bottle of water-based platen adhesive and a roll of platen paper. Place the pressure-sensitive platen paper on first. When the print job is complete, simply peel off the paper, leaving a clean platen in its place. The onboard curing unit is used to cure the printed ink. In preparation for printing, plug in the curing unit and allow approximately 15 minutes for it to heat up completely. Utilize this time to stage the shirts and printing supplies. When the screens are dry, remove them from the drying cabinet. Using the split liner screen tape that was provided in the supply package, tape out the inside perimeter of the screen. This provides for easy cleanup when you're done printing and also keeps any ink from creeping under the inside edge where the mesh and the screen frame come together. Once the screens are dry, check the alignment of the artwork one last time before adding ink to the screens. With the exposure unit on print arm number one, Place the corresponding artwork back onto the exposure unit, lower the print arm into the casting, and place the screen back into the correct casting. Secure the screen by tightening down the screen clamps. At this point, with the lights on, the image is visible through the screen. It should be lined up perfectly. 
If minor adjustments are needed, you can use the micro adjust knobs located on the printhead to realign the screen to the artwork. The 770 series has three micro adjust knobs that can be used to move the screen from side to side, fore and aft, as well as skew. Best practice is to use the target marks on your screen to line up with the target marks on the artwork. Once lined up, hold the top of the screen to the exposure unit and tighten the ratchet handles. After aligning the screens, remove the exposure module from the print arm, place the printing platen onto the arm, and secure. This is a good time to inspect the dried screen for any pinholes or other open spots in the film. If you do find some, use the block out provided with the supply package to paint them closed. Use a small brush to spread the block out. The block out is water soluble and will wash out with the film when you reclaim the screen. With larger holes, use scotch tape to fill in the area. Now, take the dried and taped screen and install it back into the correct casting that the screen was exposed in. It's important to note that each screen must be inserted into the same numbered clamp it was exposed in. Secure the screen in the printhead by tightening down the screen clamps. The exclusive taper pin registration ensures that the screen is in the exact location as when it was exposed, printing in precisely the same spot. The benefits of this amazing feature are fully realized when registering multicolor designs. The time saved with simplicity and accuracy of the process easily reduces setup time by 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the number of colors in the design. Choose the proper width squeegee for the image. Allowing one half to one inch on either side of the image is generally recommended. With the screen in the down position, Place a generous amount of ink into the screen at the clamp end, spreading it out across the width of the image to be printed. You are now ready to print. Perform a quick check to determine if everything is organized and ready to go. Check to see if the screen is secure and in the proper casting. The ink is in the correct screen. The squeegee is in place. The platen is secure. The platen has adhesive on it. The curing unit has heated up and the shirts are stacked and close at hand. Before printing on an actual shirt, test print using a test square or pellon included in the 770 series supply package. Bring the screen halfway to the platen. Gently bring the squeegee over the print area. This is called a flood stroke. After the flood stroke, bring your squeegee back to the starting point. Lower the screen into the registration gate. Using both hands, grip the squeegee and draw the ink across the image area. Do not use too much pressure, just enough to get the ink through the screen. Practice will determine what pressure and squeegee angle works for you. Using a test square allows you to check for print quality and ink cure before printing the garment. After you have done a test print and are satisfied with the print, you're ready for the real thing. Get a blank shirt, Open the shirt at the bottom and roll the material towards you. Place the shirt over the platen using the neck locator as a guide. Center the shirt on the platen. Use the same procedure for either the front or back of the shirt. When the shirt is positioned the way you want it, smooth out the surface with your hand, making sure there are no wrinkles. Mark off a neckline to ensure proper placement of the shirts during your print run. Make sure to mark off the same neckline on all of the platens. When you've made the print, set the squeegee at the back of the screen and lift the screen to the up position. At this point, you will want to spot cure the ink. If you're printing multicolor images, you may want to partially cure the ink between colors so the ink does not stick to the bottom of the next screen. Swing the curing unit over the image for approximately 5 to 10 seconds to gel the surface. After you have spot cured the ink, rotate the printhead and continue on with the second color. Once the shirt is spot cured, remove it from the platen and lay it aside. Repeat the process until the print job is complete. Do not final cure the shirt during the printing process. 
as this will heat up the platens and cause the ink to dry in the screens during the print cycle. Plastisol ink will not air dry as it is solvent free. It must be heat cured to the proper temperature to fully cure. This is generally between 330 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. When you're done printing, if using the onboard curing unit, you will now need to place the shirts back on the platen after you have spot cured them and manually cure the shirts. This generally takes an average of about 45 seconds. To make sure the ink is up to the recommended temperature, use the infrared thermometer included with the kit to test the surface of the ink. To increase production times, the use of a conveyor dryer will eliminate the need to go back and final cure the ink. After the final spot cure, simply remove the shirt and place it on the conveyor dryer. The ink will be cured as it travels through the dryer. This will free up your time to continue with the print cycle. Once you've completed the job, it's time to do the cleanup. First, return all unused inks to their respective containers. Clean as much ink out of the screens as possible. You may want to lay some newspaper or a drop cloth under your cleanup area. Latex gloves will prove handy for the cleanup procedure as well. Use the ink remover supplied with your 770 series supply package to clean the screens. Once you've determined the screen is quite clean, if you anticipate using this same image again soon, you can store the screen as is. To reuse the screen for another job, proceed with reclaiming the screen. Remove the tape from around the inside perimeter and clean once more. Make sure all of the ink is removed. At this point, apply the emulsion stripper that is included in the supply package to both sides of the screen. Start at the top and spray a small amount along the top edge allowing it to run down the surface of the screen. Allow it to sit and work for a few minutes. Using the spray attachment, gently spray lukewarm water to help speed up the process. Now, apply the water pressure to the softened emulsion. Spray until the screen looks completely clean and there is no residual emulsion visible. Take time to inspect the screen. Use the dehazer to remove any visible traces of image you are printing. Spray a small amount of dehaze onto the screen. Using the white scrub brush, gently scrub both sides of the screen. Rinse thoroughly using warm water. After you have dehazed the screen, reapply the degreasing agent, scrub the screen, and rinse. Now, Blot the reclaimed screen dry and store until ready for use. We've now completed a full cycle, from starting with artwork to printing it on a shirt. Once again, Print -A Systems is committed to supporting its customers with the latest in technical information and product support. If you have any questions after watching this video and reading the manual, please call us at the number listed in the 770 Series Owner's Manual. We wish you great success with your Prentice system.